Real Life Trading Nation. In Jay Wilder's book that you've never read, New Concepts of Technical Analysis in 1978, he introduced the Relative Strength Index. The Relative Strength Index is an indicator that I usually use for two purposes. Is the asset class oversold? Is the asset class overbought? And is there any type of divergence that could slow the impending move to a grinding halt? First, what is oversold? Well, the cool part about the Relative Strength Index is that you can use it on any time frame. But here's something that's very important and a crucial tip that no other instructor will tell you. Make sure that you go into your RSI settings and select the input nine or lower. The larger this particular number, the slower the reaction speed to the actual stock will be. For example, if that setting is one, it's gonna move very quickly, pretty much every single candle. So you're gonna to wanna to have it on a setting around nine, eight, seven, or 10. Feel free to practice some of those settings, but realistically nine, mwah, very, very nice setting for your RSI on a daily, weekly, or monthly chart. Okay, so the oversold level starts with any time that this particular indicator starts to show in trading view, it'll have a little bit of a green line right here, but historically it is at 30 or lower. Now the truth is for me, I don't really get uber excited on RSI until it's 20 or lower. Once RSI gets to 20 or lower, I know there's gonna be something that is brewing right around the corner. Now, if you're looking at this particular asset class as a cryptocurrency, that person I do expect to go a little bit higher over the next few days or weeks. And so what we're looking at is again, just trying to identify or find out is the asset that you're trying to purchase at a nice low point or is it at a nice high point? You wanna buy low, sell high, and you want to avoid buying any time that the asset is in a bunch of red or specifically above 80. If your asset on our size is above 80, you are chasing. Would you ever like to know if you are chasing a stock or a crypto or a futures or a Forex? Pull up the RSI and if the RSI indicator is 80 or higher and you're buying, you're an idiot. So looking at more information on RSI, what we can do is we can zoom in and change timeframes if we want to a weekly chart. And again, notice on a weekly chart, if we, if we zoom into a weekly chart, we really wanna be able to see these RSI settings kind of shift with any particular asset. So if we come over here to Google, for example. So Google, the more you look at individual stocks, the more you'll start to see, is this an amazing opportunity to buy or are we getting a little frothy and getting a little bit on the higher side? So here during COVID, the RSI came all the way down to 22 on Google. And just a year and a half ago, it also got down to a pretty low setting of 25. And then you can see how Google really held nicely on this below oversold price point. So if you're trying to buy a really great company that you love long term and you want to buy it at a nice price, if RSI gets to that bottom dash line on TradingView or your particular broker setting and it's a great company and it's on a weekly chart, you could probably buy it, especially if the stock is in an overall uptrend. Let's go look at Apple, for example. So Apple, again, you'll notice when it gets into this very, very nice little bottom area here, it's gonna move nicely. The next part, of course, is just the overbought price. So oversold means it's so low, the overall momentum is starting to kind of wane for the sellers. People have been selling and selling and selling and selling and selling. The same thing's gonna happen at buying. For me, overbought just simply means people have been buying it, buying it, buying it, buying it, buying it like crazy. The buyers have probably run out and eventually they're gonna start running out of steam and the stock's gonna slow down. But the number one reason that you're here and the thing that I wanna show you how to properly use the relative strength index is for both bullish and bearish divergence. This is my favorite application of the RSI indicator. The bullish and bearish divergence shows something incredible. It shows you if a particular stock is going to shift momentum or at least slow momentum, which is a fantastic application of market sentiment, especially if you are an option seller. If you sell puts, if you sell calls, if you are a credit spread seller, this is a wonderful application because when momentum begins to slow, it really does show that the stock's gonna start chilling out, 
trading sideways for a little bit and really digesting and accumulating before it has the next big move. And so if you can find a great divergence, oh my goodness, it's such a fun indicator. Check it out. If I'm looking at Apple on a weekly chart, what we will notice is right here, and it's very obvious that Apple makes a lower low on the stock price. So the stock price literally and actually does in fact go lower than this previous low over here. But if we look at the actual RSI, what we'll notice is something totally different. The RSI indicator, in fact, does not make a lower low. And that is referred to as bullish divergence. This is showing that there is an imbalance between momentum of the buyers and sellers and the selling strength that created the previous low. Those sellers are no longer as strong as they once were, and therefore they cannot continue to drive the stock at the momentum, the pace, and the speed at which they previously did it. This indicator should tell you and show you Start looking for bullish positions. Start looking for bullish positions. Start planning for your bullish positions. Preparation equals profit. You sit down on the weekend, you begin to look for your divergences, and you begin to take effect and to take notice of how you can implement whatever strategies you're comfortable with. Maybe you're buying stock. Maybe you're selling puts. Maybe you're buying calls. Maybe you're doing something of all three. Maybe you're beginning an accumulation process where you're buying five or 10 shares every single week. Maybe you're starting to leg into your IRAs. Whatever the case is, and whatever the best application for your particular strategy to take advantage of the upside, whichever strategy you're most comfortable with, begin implementing it. Now, that's bullish divergence. Again, bullish divergence can work on any time frame. What we're gonna talk about next is bearish divergence, and again, how you can implement bearish divergence to just simply maybe protect yourself on the downside or capture day trading profits bearish or make some bear swing trade money. So now, still on Apple, still on the weekly chart, what you'll notice is right here, Apple did in fact make a similar high, but by a few pennies, it did make a new all-time high. And what did the RSI do? The RSI, continue to make lower highs. This doesn't mean that Apple's gonna tank and go to zero. What it means is the bullish momentum is going to weaken, it's going to slow down. So if you're in shares, that allows you to do covered calls, maybe even closer to the overall price of the stock. Maybe it allows you to do a bear call spread. Maybe it allows you to get into a collar. Maybe it allows you to sell some of your shares, trim and trail. Or if you are a strong bear trader, maybe you begin to take bear positions, bear, swing trade bearish, day trade bearish. It just tells you, hey, something is shifting. The momentum is beginning to change. Really take note. And it becomes even more fun when you really zoom in. And what we're going to notice here on Apple is, again, just like the previous move, you have a new high here on Apple and you had a lower high here on Apple. And for those who are watching, true or false, this particular move is above 80 on the RSI indicator. And the answer is true. That simply means since it's 80 and above, you really need to be extremely cautious going bullish there or just don't. Wait, let it calm down, let it rest. Because if you are buying anything on an RSI above 80, you're probably chasing that move. And it doesn't mean that you can't make money but it does mean that you're not gonna make money for very long because there will be a pause, there will be a rest, there will be a slowdown in the overall bullish momentum. So to now hop into a different time frame, let's pull up a random stock, let's pull up Nvidia. And I'm gonna pull up Nvidia on a smaller time frame. Let's go look at this on a five minute chart and just notice how RSI impacts the overall stock itself. So pulling up uh, Nvidia and don't include extended hours on your RSI setting. It's not gonna work, it's not helpful. Okay, so here's your RSI on NVIDIA. Now again, keep in mind, I do not have RSI up on my intraday timeframes ever when I'm day trading. What I'm showing you is it might help you depending on where you are in your journey. Sometimes it does and is helpful for traders to have a setting that just says, hey, are you buying high? Hey, are you being a big dum-dum? Hey, do you have FOMO? Are you chasing the stock? Are you getting in at a price that you shouldn't? It can be valuable and useful at times to have an indicator that says that. But of course, if you have it on your screen and you're not using it, then it's pointless. Therefore, if we look at NVIDIA right now on a five minute chart, you will notice two things. Right here, NVIDIA was very much above 80. So from here onward, uh, NVIDIA was above 80. 
It made a higher high. And what did RSI do? RSI, in fact, made a lower high. So this is, again, showing you this is bearish divergence. This means, very simply, pretend that you went long on NVIDIA on this really nice triangle breakout, and you bought right there. And you were wondering the next day or towards the end of the day, should I sell? Well, at this particular price, the answer would have been or could have been or absolutely should have been, yes, this is a great place to sell because RSI is absolutely above 80 previously. NVIDIA made a new high and the RSI indicator did not make a new high showing bearish divergence. So I can assume that NVIDIA is going to slow down here. And obviously, can we look at the chart? Did it slow down? And the answer is absolutely. If you sold some of your profits from this previous breakout, you sold it at 706, 705, or 704, you were able to at least avoid another seven or eight dollar massive pullback, allowing you to be more calm, be more patient, take your profits. Maybe you trend some of your profits, and maybe as the stock pulls back, you bought a little bit more, or you were just content with making a nice gain from yesterday's move into today's move, and you're able to sell based on RSI. Let's go look at a bullish indicator. Now, I know as I'm looking back in the past, all of you are going to say, well, Newsom, you're just using the past to look at charts, to analyze everything. What are you doing? This isn't going to help me in the future. That's how you study, right? You study the past and go, based on this past empirical evidence, here's how I'm going to use the future. And I will show you right here, using this indicator, four or five trades in just a moment, based on the RSI, they're going to work out. And maybe you take them, maybe you don't. So right now, all I'm doing is looking for bullish divergence just so that I can see what it would have looked like at that particular time. And really, this is an okay example. So notice right here, NVIDIA has a low, and then we make a new low. If we're looking at the RSI, you'll see that the RSI actually did not make that relative low along with the stock. So that could have been a spot that you were looking to expect the momentum to shift a little bit. Uh, okay, looking, continue to look, continue to look. Great example, right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw essentially this horizontal line, but you'll notice right there, NVIDIA did in fact make a strong lower low. And what did the RSI indicator do? The RSI indicator was making a higher low. If you were watching that, if it was up on your screen, and if you took notice, you could say, hey, I'm going to use this particular price, this particular candle as a indication that we could pop the next two candles later, we closed above the high of that candle, also took out a lot of bare volume, closed above it, retested it, and then had one strong pop up into that resistance where RSI got almost overbought, almost hit 80. But again, it was a strong spot to sell because it did crap cross your dotted line, it hit a previous resistance, and you were profitable. All things that can be used, again, to start building your plan. But if you're not using this indicator, you've never used this indicator, and you have a struggle with buying low and selling high, practice it. Go back and back trade with it and see if it helps your results. So now, let's go do some predictions into the future. First, I'm gonna pull up a stock that I'm just absolutely crushing right now, Mongo Database, and I'm gonna use RSI to let you know my overall thoughts. So this is the daily chart on Mongo Database. And using RSI, right now we're at 77.23, so it's my interpretation that that shows that the trend will continue and Mongo database most likely will have hit a little bit above 494 by watching this video. We probably had a small pullback and then now, depending on when you're watching this, it's very likely above $500. Overall trend broke out. You had higher lows come in. You had a really good resistance come in. We've broken out. The trend looks beautiful. And let me pop into a weekly chart and show you something cool. This particular weekly chart on Mongo database, we did have some divergence, and that is why we began to pause. Here's a high, here's a higher high. Although it's by really a couple dollars and pennies, notice the drastic divergence that took place on Mongo database. What this allowed for right here was really a congestion and a rest of the overall move, allowing Mongo to breathe, to really build pressure, to consolidate, to build compressure. And then once it broke out, this trend, there's nothing stopping it as far as moving averages go until 514. I'm in shares, I'm in calls, and I'm very, very happy if Mongo Base continues higher. Let's go look at the stock that I'm not in yet, and that's Coinbase. And let's go look at the daily chart. And what we're going to notice on the daily chart is something pretty cool. First and foremost, here's your long-term moving averages. 
So the long-term moving averages, here's your 100 simple moving average. And when I said I'm not in Coinbase, I am, I am selling options on Coinbase to try to get in to Coinbase. So I do have some put sales on Coinbase, uh, some that expire this Friday and some that expire over earnings, which is next Friday. And I will be buying shares depending on what earnings do. But if we go back over into RSI and we notice one very, very crucial thing, notice how Coinbase did in fact make a lower low on the stock, but the RSI indicator did not make that lower low. In fact, you could probably argue that it just stayed flat. That being flat with Coinbase making a lower low was in fact and is in fact bullish divergence. What does that tell me? Well, unless earnings open below 112, which is a possibility, and we know earnings is around the corner, unless Coinbase opens below 112 on earnings, which is just a couple days from now, and I don't expect that to happen, I believe that Coinbase is going to hold 115 or higher for the next eight weeks. And that will allow you to do put sales, bull put spreads, buy shares, do covered calls, and do strategies that are a little bit more bullish to neutral. In fact, a previous video when I discussed covered calls shows me planning already ahead of time, buying some shares of Coinbase, and I'll begin to do that on a retest now that we've gotten above this bear volume. We have some divergence, and I have some put sales expiring worthless this Friday, which is tomorrow. Today's Thursday as I'm recording this. And I'll take some of that put sale premium and I'll begin to buy some shares to leg into a position and then to sell some covered calls on Coinbase as well. Really great stock down here at the 100 with that bullish divergence and crypto right now is also pretty hot. So I expect the stock to go higher. I know I said that was 12 minutes. It's a little bit longer than 12 minutes, but I hope this video and content was helpful. If it was, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It makes my wife really happy and happy wife, happy life. I'll see you in the next video and pose in the comment section below. Is there anything that I can provide more value to you? What would you like to see? What content can I help you with? Put in the comments below. I'm here to enrich your life. Thanks for watching.